news that is ongoing right now. Um, Mr. Chuku, if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you and I can see the studio. Okay, good. Now I can see you. Now I can see you. Welcome to the show. Um, you know, social media and in fact, if you, if you click news about Nigeria now on the internet, what comes up is this FBI news, this fraud news about close to 80 Nigerians being implicated in one of the largest fraud history uh, in the United States. In fact, uh, for some people that are just waking up this morning, they are asking their pairs or they're asking their friends or family members, have you seen the news? So I guess, Mr. Chuku, you've seen the news. What comes to mind? <laughs> of course, I've seen the news. Uh, I said, sad. I said, uh, this, uh, this started that uh, we're just coming up with a very negative news on the country. Just a few days after the first news on uh, Obi-Wan KK, the billionaire, uh, the Forbes-related uh, billionaire who was also arrested for $12 million fraud. And then we're now dealing with about 18 Nigerians arrested in um, charge in U.S. with about 14 of them already, um, already in custody. I, I mean, this sends a very negative news about the country. And uh, the key challenge you have is that when you have such widespread uh, issues of fraud, uh, every Nigerian is now viewed with suspicion. For those of us who are currently outside the country, when you enter these foreign countries, irrespective of your squeaky background, they first uh, have the suspicion that if you're a Nigerian, you must also be uh, involved in some uh, unethical practices. So it's quite uh, disheartening to me. And... Um, it's something that every Nigerian have every reason to be to be unhappy or to be worried about. Now, let me come to Dr. Ekechuku. Is it condemnable? Because I've looked at the social media and you're seeing different sides. Oh, it's not only us. Oh, uh, uh, it's because we are poor. Is is <laughs> so? Th does that really say that we should not condemn it? This is totally condemnable. Um, very embarrassing to this nation. Um, this is a period we, we are thinking we should be building the image of Nigeria in order to increase the number of investors that want to have interest in Nigeria. Um, so many investors want to come to Nigeria, and um, what, they, what they hear is just the negative side. It's either that of insecurity in the country, now this is it. Unfortunately, uh, the target of most of these things are people also who are wishing to do business in Nigeria. And of course, they take advantage of the fact that they have interest in doing business in Nigeria to want to uh, dupe them. And these things, these methods are in many forms, many, many forms. Once it looks like you are beginning to um, uh, protect a particular one, then they'll go to another method. And they keep using these methods to just um, defraud the uh, unsuspecting people and business people and Nigerians um, in general. In fact, um, there was one, um, of course, you know, sometimes when you receive a call that has international number today, that does not mean that call is actually coming from international uh, community. It may have uh, international number of uh, UK or America or, Brit or, or India. Those people calling you are from within here in Nigeria. And so all they would just do is just to, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it, but I know that Every Nigerian must be very careful. And just to be very careful means that don't ever get into any business discussion with somebody you have no business knowing or you don't know or you have not seen or you have not uh, checked, done a good background uh, check on. Otherwise, it is very easy these days to just defraud anybody. Okay, Mr. Chuku, let me come to you there in, in the UK. Uh, just like you said, you are there in the UK. You've been traveling at least for the past few days. And perhaps even for those Nigerians or for a lot of Nigerians, and Nigerians are very good travelers, you begin to have, I, I will try to put it, like in business, isn't it? Like a reputational risk or so. Because the, what we are suffering right now is like a reputational mess or a reputational scandal. But uh, it... Talking about not excusing what these people or close to 80 Nigerians have done in the United States, as, as far as the U.S. is concerned, one of the largest fraud cases in history in their country. In fact, when I was listening to the man, uh, was it last night, that's L.A. time, uh, he did say about $1.1 billion have been creamed out of the U.S. from January to July uh, from fraudulent activities of, this, of these guys. 
Like I said earlier, are all Nigerians internet frosters, so to speak, because as you, if you're traveling or you're dealing with anybody else from, from the world, they look at you in a different light. Just the same way that they have mass shootings in the U.S. Are all American citizens mass shooters? Are all Mexicans, for example, drug dealers, where you see, uh, you see majority of the drugs in the United States coming, which Trump has also alluded to, coming from North America, precisely from Mexico and perhaps other South American countries. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, uh, Mr. Chuku. Yes, absolutely. I do understand you. Uh, let's look at putting it in perspective. I was watching a program yesterday uh, on Idi Amin and uh, Uganda, and uh, the program director on, uh, on the, the program director said that, look, until recently, if you mention you are from Uganda, the first thing they ask you is, what have we done? I mean, you see, the basic thing about uh, um, tagging people or um, getting a negative image is because once an issue is associated with a society, everybody in that society may be notionally assumed to have that tendency. It doesn't necessarily mean that we all are all, all criminals. I have suffered personally from these uh, um, um, issues of Nigerians being tagged as, uh, as uh, criminals. I give a class I arrived at the um, Atlanta last week Thursday, and uh, I flew in from London, and it was basically a London uh, Atlanta flight. In that flight, there were very few Nigerians. I had only one luggage, and my uh, my carry-on luggage, and uh, I had no food item. And eventually, essentially, I was among those that was profiled for a search on my bag with only one luggage to confirm if I don't have a food item or any other suspicious item. And I was finally and laughing when they were searching my bag. But the guy, that, the, guy uh, the immigration officer opened the bag, he looked at, they had only books, uh, magazines, and my clothes. And he started laughing. I said, why did they ask me to search your bag? I said, because you, you should ask yourself that question. Not just, just because I, I, I'm a Nigerian. Um, in 2017, I was in Washington Business School. I made a presentation on the uh, issues that led to the American uh, financial crisis. And by the time I finished, the whole class was clapping. And then one woman made a comment. She said she, said she couldn't believe they are intelligent people from Nigeria. She, and then the class went cold. And, and they asked her, why do you say that? Then the facilitator asked her, where do you was? Said she was with FBI. said, no wonder. You only run into criminals. But she knew, she knows so many Nigerians who are honest, who are hardworking, who are intelligent. I'm talking about personal experiences. And the woman said to the class, pointedly, that she couldn't believe there was a decent Nigerian, intelligent Nigerian in a class of more than 40 people. So I've lived with this uh, uh, tag that once you're in Nigeria, you're associated with uh, some level of uh, crime, criminality, just like you mentioned Mexico. The reality is that if you go to uh, other countries and you see a Mexican, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is uh, the drug wars. So the key thing is that it's a challenge for us. We need to put our house in order. And for us to put our house in order, we look at what are the social factors that are driving Nigeria to this level of crime, criminal activity. What are the economic factors driving Nigeria to this level of uh, econo uh, economic crime? And then we also look at uh, the criminal tendencies, and we need to build structures that will frustrate such criminal activities locally before they go outside the country. Um, one of the challenges we have as a country is that we have minimal economic opportunities for those who are intelligent and hardworking to realize themselves. And then you end up pushing some intelligent people, some hardworking people who all would already have remained in legitimate businesses into criminal activity because they have no alternative. I am not giving excuses for criminal engagement, but I'm saying that the environment should create opportunities for hardworking people to realize themselves, to achieve economic success, uh, and that will reduce the number of people who go into crime because they see that as the only way out to realize themselves. Um, Mr. Chuku, let me just stick with you a bit and I'll come back to Dr. Eke Chuku. You know, because this is really a serious issue. In fact, uh, looking through this news, and I also heard someone say it, that perhaps this is the biggest news after the kidnap of Chibo girls that took the whole world by storm. That's a, so it's like this is the second biggest news after the kidnap of uh, Chibo girls. How do you think that this 
uh, story should be addressed. Because just like you said, there are a lot of Nigerians, many Nigerians that are doing well. In fact, there are many Nigerians across the world that are doing well in different fields, in global politics, in finance, in the arts world, uh, you know, in sciences and all of that. You have uh, Nigerians heading global agencies. There is a Barakindo in OPEC. You know, Arumote is in, I think, UK where you are there. Also, we have a lot of our young people doing well, talking about even startups that are changing lives here in the country and the rest of Africa. How should we tackle this uh, story? How should the government also tackle this story? Uh, the big part of my question is, about 14 of them have been arrested also in the U.S. Uh, many of them at large, the FBI said, they are mostly here in Nigeria and other parts of the world. That brings in EFCC uh, into the question. Um, let me also say this, the, the, the C part of, of it, which both of you would answer, is that how does EFCC also begin to fight the cyber crime? Because a lot of people have also complained that it's not about just internet fraud, but it's also corruption is a fraud. It's also a fraud in a way that you see all those big men that have defrauded the country. They are, they are using the judiciary to elongate their cases. But when it comes to Yahoo Yahoo um, cases, uh, you see the EFCC fighting quickly. Before you know it, one week they are, their matters are out of court and they are in jail already, but you don't see that sort of attention for people that have also defrauded the nation. I hope you understand yeah. all this mm -hmm. grammar that I'm speaking. <laughs> yes, uh, let me start from this uh, aspect, uh, the last aspect of your question. Uh, in the first place, I did mention that it's no excuse for anybody to uh, condole any form of criminality, be it uh, fraud, wire fraud, or those who steal from government for public, public post. And again, we also mentioned the fact that the fact that uh, one criminal is not caught should not be an excuse to discharge and acquit another criminal. Um, but that now takes us to the next part of it. The government has a responsibility to make sure that justice is blind. The concept of justice being blind is because it does not pander to level, it doesn't pander to societal standards, it doesn't pander to economic status, and that should be what the government priority should be. The reality is that when government condoles some level of corruption or admit those who are going through corruption charges into governance, what they end up is what they end up doing is to corrupt the corrupt anti-corruption war. Because once you corrupt the anti-corruption war, people lose confidence in the impartiality of that anti-corruption war. So government must be conscious of that. Now back to the other aspect of your question. Um, which relates to uh, Nigerians are corrupt, uh, what do we need to do? There has to be short, medium, and long-term measures to address these issues of malfeasance and the uh, abuse of the reputation of this country. One is that the issue of enforcement. Uh, the law enforcement must be very eff efficacious, they must be effective, and they must make, make sure that justice is delivered and delivered timely both locally and internationally. On this particular instance, the government has a federal government has a duty to cooperate fully with the United States FBI uh, to show that the government will not condole criminality by Nigerian citizens. And when Nigerians are involved anywhere in the world in criminal activities, they should be sanctioned upon it according to the laws of the country that they will free on. But the medium to long term solution to the problem is to address the economic and social factors that are driving Nigerians to engage in corrupt and criminal activity. Let me bring to mind the recent experience when I was a kid, the Ghanaian economy was in, was in Tatars. It was a basket case. And you know what happened? Ghanaians migrated to Nigeria and the women were prostitutes. They were all in all brothels in Aba and the southeast of the country. Uh, but today, where do you see Ghanaians prostituting? Ghanaians have gone back and they are part of the country because the economy is doing well. Ghanaians can visit almost any country visa free. They can go to uh, South Africa visa free because the economy is doing well. The economic well being of society will determine the respect that society will enjoy in the Committee of Nations. So, if we fix our economy, we're going to reduce the level of the number of Nigerians who engage in criminal activities, Nigerians who travel outside the country because they don't even have the pass to work and engage in legitimate jobs. So, they are left with only criminal engagement. So, we need to address the inherent challenges of a very big, weak economy. 
Okay, Dr. Ekechuku, um, your own version yes. of my question. Um, the, the, the problem is far beyond the socioeconomic uh, situation of the country. The problem goes up to the value system that we have grown up to see. Um, you see that um, children today grow up to watch criminals being celebrated, um, fraudsters being celebrated just because they have money. Children grow up to see people who have defrauded the government and the Nigerian people um, being celebrated. When they are jailed and they, 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 they are released to come back to their cities, um, they, they, all the people will come out and celebrate them and uh, sing for them. And so if the value system is such that we celebrate criminals and celebrate uh, fraudsters, then that is again where the problem is. So whether the social economic situation of the, Niger of the Nigerian system is bad or not, you see that if the value system accepts these people and celebrates them, then we also have it wrong. Um, so um, like um, Mr. Chuku said, we need to enforce certain measures to penalize these kinds of people. Mm. Now, well, he already mentioned the fact that we have a good number of people whose cases are still in uh, court for fraud um, in, in government, one government or the other. And uh, Nigerians are disenchanted with that. Nigerians are heavily um, not happy about this. The fact that we know that this person has this matter. Is he the only person that could actually be brought into governance? Why can't you try some other people whose uh, slates are clean? Why do we have to bring such people back to government when they still have issues? How will EFCC continue with such cases right now when they have such cases in court? So, you know, Nigerians are not very happy with this kind of situation. And so the same thing we're talking about value system. If the value system celebrates these people, then, of course, people want to go into uh, fraud. And because they want to be celebrated also, they want to come back and uh, make some noise and people will just accept them in the system. So we need to also do everything to correct our value system. And the way to do it is just to make sure that people get punished when there are such offenses committed by them. So if, mm -hmm. we, if they get punished and they are brought to book, then we'll, we'll just be on the right path. Okay, just as we end this discussion on this uh, story now that is, you know, that has gone agog uh, in the country, talking about uh, the FBI uh, story, Mr. Chuku, you know, they did also talk about romance scam and the business email compromise, uh, the BEC. In fact, even as a Nigerian, sometimes you even get fraudulent mails. I've said it here on my program many times. I've warned Nigerians that they should beware because the kind of scam that you also see, you see text messages come to you that you should reveal your passwords, you should reveal your banking details, or you should reveal your PIN and also your BVN. Uh, to, you know, that your bank needs it and all of that is also part of what we are talking about. And I've warned Nigerians that you should not divulge such information. How should we flip this narrative now moving forward? You know, just like I said earlier, perhaps uh, as uh, a list of close to 80 people are being brought out for this bad behavior, uh, we should also bring up a list of 80 people that are doing Nigeria uh, proud worldwide in the, in the aspect of medicine. Mr. Chuku, you are laughing. Yes. In the aspect of medicine, in the aspect of global finance, in the aspect of uh, uh, global politics, check out the man that, that operated on a fetus in the womb of a woman, I think also in the United States there, when the child was still in the, uh, in the belly of the mom before birth, operated, removed the tumor, and took the baby back, and the baby was born at nine months. <laughs> that doctor was a Nigerian. So I think these are some of the stories we should also help push out there, even as we condemn close to 80 Nigerians. Ob uh, what's his name? Obiwani and his folks, you know, that what you're doing is not good. Turn a new leaf. Mr. Chuku, very quickly. Okay, well, it will be at the rim of the, at the uh, feet of the federal government to mm. create a communication channel to portray, to portray the country positively. The country, uh, in the past, we know there was a time during the Bangladesh government where the government was pushing to portray Nigeria to made positively in the global uh, space. And unfortunately, we, are, we seem to have gone silent on that. And you had mentioned a lot of Nigerians who are doing extremely well. Uh, uh, Gatwick Airport is being managed by Nigerians. By Nigeria. And you have a lot. 
Uh, yes, they have been so many Nigerians who are doing well in their different states of life. It's the duty of government to project that. We need to project a positive aspect of the country. You cannot be silent um, uh, and then expect the world to project you. Uh, in as much as you do everything to discourage your city from engage, engaging in criminal activities, you must also tell the world that you have a lot of Nigerians. We are 100, 200 million people. Nancy, you know the implication of having 200 million people? If one percent of Nigerians are criminals, you have to, uh, two million criminals. And two million criminals would drive away the U.S. or England uh, if they engage in criminal activities. So we have to deal with the issue of number. Um, but that, like I keep saying, that there's no excuse for anybody to control criminal activities. But the reality is that the government must have a duty to present us positively so mm. that the world does not only listen to the negative narrative of the country. Um, and then we also have to make sure that it's not about uh, what that our facts, the facts also represent what we present. We need to fix our economy. We need to fix our infrastructure. We need to make this country attractive for people to come in. Today, the black race is visiting Ghana on a daily basis. Ghana has created a visa class that allows uh, black Americans or black, blacks anywhere in the world to come and settle in America as their home country, uh, to come and settle in Ghana as their home country, and reach black Americans and black Afri uh, uh, of other uh, countries are coming back to Ghana and seeing Ghana as a home, to, uh, their natural home. So we need to create such opportunities for people to... In fact, as you're even talking of Ghana, Ghana what came to my mind, uh, Mr. Chuku, sorry for interrupting, as you're talking of Ghana, what came to my mind is just a few weeks ago, uh, South Africa gave Ghana uh, visa-free. So Ghanaians can actually go to South Africa visa-free. And if I, when I saw the news, I was like, yes. oh, really? Ghana, why not Nigeria? <laughs> you know, see? Mm -hmm. So it's still part of the image we're talking about. If um, Ghana can say, oh, South Africans, you're free to come into the, into, uh, no, if South Africa can say Ghanaians are free to come into South Africa, what about Nigeria? Yeah, but that, that boils down to the same issue, economic diplomacy. Mm. The reality is that a Ghanaian has no business going to uh, settle in South Africa and be doing many jobs. Because the economic opportunities are available to him in Ghana. If you grant that to Nigerians, I can tell you 10 million Nigerians will migrate to South Africa the next day. And when they get there, they won't have jobs to do. If they don't have jobs to do, they're not going to sit down on their palms and go hung die hungry. They will engage in some activities. Those activities may be criminal in nature. Mm. So we need to. The foundation of our problem is the economic downturn. We want to fix the economy, every other thing will fall into place. I'm not discounting the issue of uh, moral value. But like I said, the government creates value. Go government creates the culture. Leadership creates culture. There's no culture that was that was sent down from heaven. It's leadership that defines what is of paramount importance to the society and what is of no consequence to the society. When the government condones and admits criminality or those who have pending legal cases uh, into the leadership of the country, what they have done is to legitimize such bad behavior. And we must uh, put this before the government that, look, we are sending the wrong message to Nigerians, we are sending the wrong message to the world, that we are not serious when it comes to fight against criminal activity. All right, I think, uh, Mr. Chuku, thank you for joining us. Let's continue the show here from Abuja. It's such uh, a top story that we can't just allow it fly. As a Nigerian, uh, today, you can imagine what, you know, what kind of reputation or what kind of image that we're bringing globally to the world. But I'm also proud to say that I'm a Nigerian any day, any time. And I hope that you're also proud to tell them there in the UK when they bring you out to profile you, just like you said, you were smiling and the man was also smiling after searching your bag, you know. Uh, like they say, Nigerian, they carry last. So we shouldn't carry last Sorry. in positive things. Well, nice. I keep rubbing it on your face. To tell them, look, you bring out any American or any British people, I'm sure one million and one of us can match them in our standards. And that we have never been, some, many of us have never been involved in criminal activities. I tell them when they stand by by that, I've never seen cocaine in my life. And that's mm. the truth. So, and I say, look, you have the right to clean and open the bags. You're not going to see anything incriminating. I never will you see that in me or any of my family members. Thank you, Mr. Chuku, for uh, speaking with me today. All right, I wish you a lovely trip back home and s safe trip. So we'll speak when you come back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's quickly take a break. And when we come back, we will continue the discussion. Today is supposed to be an interactive session, actually. but. Uh,